Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. Apologies for the mistake with the address. We're happy you found us. My name is Sabrina. I'm with Optitex, and I'm really happy to be here today with FIDM, who is a legacy in its own in the industry, and with ASU, the new partnership between ASU and FIDM. ASU has been instrumental in the past few years building a program from scratch into a digital powerhouse that is going to help bridge the gap that we have in the industry today when it comes to skill. We have a lot of exciting news for you. We have a lot of exciting presentations, and we're glad you're here. With that, I will hand it over to Danita, the program director for ASU FIDM. Thank you, everyone. It's great to have uh, this gathering here tonight. We really appreciate the partnership with OptiTex. Sabrina and I started on this journey back in 2016 as we were forming the fashion program. And I knew that digital was going to be important at that time already. And then, of course, the events of the last few years with COVID really accelerated the importance of that. So we were very excited that we already had an established program going. Uh, the fashion programs launched in the fall of 2017, grew very rapidly. Currently, we're serving over 700 students, two campuses, both in Phoenix and Los Angeles. Our students are about 50% design, tracks and about 50% business tracks. Follow us on Instagram at ASU FIDM to learn more about events like this. So we were originally located on the main campus in Tempe. I love this photo because the students are so into what they're doing. They're not looking at their phones. They're not looking at the other people in the room. And we found this commitment among the students, the dedication uh, to learning about the industry from the very beginning. We were lucky we were able to move to a new building in the fall of 2021, a new purpose-built building in downtown Phoenix, Fusion on First, the windows that you see there, those are all fashion studios wrapping around both floors. Um, we're very excited to have integrated with FIDM this year, launching our first cohort of students August 17th, about 100 freshmen. We're really excited to s watch them grow. We have terrific facilities that we've already been operating out of in Phoenix, so this is the view from one of the main fashion studios. And you can see we're right there in the heart of downtown Phoenix. Ample uh, classroom spaces, uh, sewing spaces, and echoing those resources here in Los Angeles is going to be terrific for our students. We've been doing an annual fashion show, just like FINM has been doing with uh, students showing the work in front of thousands of people in Scottsdale Fashion Square. We really value the partnerships that we have in the community and with industry members. So we have a partnership with Phoenix Children's Hospital where we pair students and patients. That's very rewarding. Uh, we provide the fashion show for the Humane Society. We have industry guest speakers come into the classroom, invited guests, um, and, and do demonstrations, spend time with our students, a real commitment to industry, as well as taking students around the world. So we took them to Paris two times for 21 days in Paris with two trip leaders. This year, we're going to Italy. So, uh, and we hope to continue to grow the global education. We have had interns um, all across the US, really. Students um, have either found jobs in Phoenix, 
They've gravitated to New York. They've gravitated here to Los Angeles. So these are three students who were in Los Angeles. This is all sort of as the FITM in integration was unraveling, they were already finding their way over for internships. And I'm really excited that we have two of our students here with us tonight. I would like to invite Gifty and Jessica to come to the stage. Hi. <laughs> um, so we are students at ASU. We are currently seniors. OK, perfect. Um, my name's Jesse McKenzie. I'm a senior pursuing a BA in fashion business. Um, I got started in design through growing up sewing alongside my grandmother, as well as stealing my mother's Vogue, which I still do from time to time. And what interested me most in that was how these garments were created. And so I draw most of my inspiration from technical design to mix the, combine the artistry of aesthetics with the precision of functionality. I look forward to a career in technical design and I am eager to keep learning and growing within the industry. Hi, my name is Gifty. I am getting a BA in fashion design. Um, I'm currently a senior. Um, I've always been inspired by my culture. Uh, anytime there's an event, I'm Nigerian. Anytime there's an event, you, you make an outfit for it. It doesn't matter if it's a birthday, a wedding, funeral, anything. Um, so I've always been into design and sewing. Um, and I'm really inspired by fine arts and especially digital arts. I just love being on the computer and I love bold prints and all these fun things with the computer. Um, so I am really interested in being in technical design, but I guess my one goal that I really have is to have my own business, whether it's in bridal or a ready to wear resort wear line for women. So. And then now Gifty and I have some portfolio work with some work we've done in OptiTech. So this is a look I designed in Alex's Tech 2 class, which is mostly just an OptiTech class. You can tell that the ruffle feature was my favorite feature to learn. And I pursued that wherever I could. Um, so through that, we went through tech sketches and fabric swatches. Um, and we'll move on to gifties. <laughs> so well, I actually worked on one of these pieces for my fashion. It was a Fashion Tech 3 class that I did this on. And so we had a little bit more freedom to design on our own. Um, in the previous class that she was in, it was a little bit more directed where we actually learned how to use the software. This was kind of, you know, we design a collection and we have a little bit more room to explore the program. Um, so. For this look, this is one of my favorite looks. I, what, one thing I um, loved about OptiText was how I'm able to integrate it with other um, applications and software. So the gradient on there, I actually made it in Adobe Illustrator. And I was able to take that gradient and you know put it into OptiText and apply it to the garment. So um, I think that is an amazing feature. And then her little background in the back, I was able to upload that little photo and put her in you know um, a place that I felt represented my collection that I was doing. So there's a lot of um, amazing things that you can do with OptiText that really, you know, B brings out your portfolio. And then one other thing that I did love about the process of making this was that with OptiText, there's an undo button. So I can try out new things and kind of go between editing my original sketch and what I now wanted to see in OptiText. So that's what I do with this look. I had like a basic top and then I was like, you know, what if I added a little bit more dynamic to it, right? So then I could go back and edit my illustration to match what I now actually like to see in OptiText. 
And then our experience with OptiTech. So my background in sustainable design initially sparked my interest in OptiTechs. As a whole, I feel it reduces waste and saves time through efficiency and prototyping, longevity and durability through fit, where you can check the warp and the weft, and on-demand production. Um, embracing OptiTex welcomed errors for allowing the creation of unique and cutting edge designs without the excess of material, and it took about a quarter of the time it normally would. Yeah, and just to reiterate, it's really a, a time saver. So if anyone has done pattern drafting physically, you know that anytime you want to make a change, you have to scrap something. It has to go in the garbage, and then you have to do the entire process all over again. And like I said, there's an undo button with OptiTex. If I don't like something, undo. And I, you know, I can start over. I can go back to what I had before and work my way up. So it does reduce waste in that way. And um, also, once again, like this integration between other softwares like Adobe Illustrator, I can literally get my pattern 2D in Adobe, grade it, all these things that you can do. So I think it really streamlines the process and allows you to be a little bit more creative instead of having to feel like you have to stick to your original design because you don't want to waste time, you don't want to waste money, you don't want to waste resources. You can, you know, come out of the box a little bit in OptiText because you can check out all these different designs without wasting any of your money and your time. So I think it really does streamline the process and actually allows you to be a little bit more creative in a sense, which seems counterintuitive because it's technology and we think that um, creativity is only the physical, right? But I think it does allow you to, to maneuver things a little bit more. Great, and then our future with OptiTex. In our future as technical designers utilizing OptiTex, we will anticipate a dynamic and innovative career within the fashion industry. OptiTex's advanced 3D pattern design tools will empower us to create creative, precise, well-fitting garments. We hope to be at the forefront of technological advancements using virtual simulations to bring our designs to life. Yeah, and so once again, we know that fashion is moving, you know, towards the digital direction. We know that with COVID, we saw how everybody was trying to move towards like cloud solutions and all these things because they couldn't work in their buildings. And so I think that this is an important, you know, skill to have because essentially we're kind of like hybrids, you know what I mean? Like, so we toe the line of, you know, fashion design and then that technical design side. And I think it really is an asset, especially for companies that are trying to move towards digital solutions. So. I believe that us learning OptiTech has actually sharpened our skill set in that way and actually makes us an asset to these companies that are looking for you know, people with this skill as they're moving forward in that direction in the industry. Here we go. Yeah. All right, thank you. And now I'll welcome Alex Snyder. Hi, everybody. I have to actually say, first and foremost, this is my first public speaking thing since before the pandemic. So this is really interesting to be back in front of human beings and not be a square on Zoom. So nice to meet everybody. My name is Alex Snyder. I am a clinical assistant professor specializing in digital technologies specific to digital pattern making, 3D prototyping, and technical design. Um, I have been with the ASU family and now ASU FITM family for three years, and it has been quite a journey. Um, the topic that we're really covering or that I'm really covering is the future of education with digital integration because we're seeing a big change and a seismic change in the way that education needs to be approached and the way that we need to do this for our student. And technology is really um, causing that to move a lot quicker. So let's go back a little bit, because I just want to go through what this digital uh, journey for ASU has looked like and ASU FITM. 
In 2017, the program launched, and um, shortly after, in 2020, I was speaking on a panel at the Fashion Tech event for education. And I was saying one of the issues that I saw in education was that it was not modernizing, and the education that we saw 10 years ago is still in the classroom. And we're not showing students enough design for them to be designers, and we weren't showing enough technical design for them to be technical designers, and we really needed to reinvent the way education and the, the approach to education was going to be. Shortly after, Danita Sewell uh, gave me a call and we had a great conversation and she said, Alex, you know, would you take on one class? And I said, sure, you know, we'll try this out, we'll see how this works. And our first cohort of students in fashion technology using Optitech started in 2021. Shortly after, as we started to talk with Optitex in general, they were seeing the ways in which we approached this type of education, and they were seeing the changes that we were doing, and they really noticed that we were becoming a cornerstone in the approach to digital, digital design in the education place. So we came together, and they wanted to do a global marketing video really highlighting the efforts of ASU FITM, or and um, we released this video. It will start in a second after that amazing thumbnail of me. <laughs> to bring it into the classroom and to see our students here at Arizona State University light up when they realized that they could speak to different body forms, body shapes, different forms of silhouettes that they might not have explored is amazing. We're not only just celebrating the designer, we're celebrating the technical designer. And they're learning more, they're getting more educated, they're becoming more thoughtful and precise. And that alone is a huge benefit. And then when you think about them graduating and going into the actual corporate or business Business and taking this knowledge, I mean, it's endless. I see 3D pattern making being the complete future of this industry. For any large company, especially companies that work with manufacturers overseas, this cuts down on so much cost. This is a no-brainer. I think that 3D makes it look really professional and really like clean, and I think that for me, it makes me feel more confident when I walk into a space or a job. I can just pull this up on like an iPad and present myself in a way that's comparable to someone who's more experienced. Um, I think it's a really big creative tool. And with OptiTech specifically, we can work on models and bringing in gender queer bodies. There's this huge trend right now with gender neutral items trying to figure out how to get a gender neutral body and what a lot of people don't realize is those bodies already exist. They're just widely unignored. I'm one of them. And so to have a system, to have a program that creates an all-around accessibility point not only for the communities we've been ignoring, but for the communities we want to include. I think 3D is just at the beginning. We're just starting to see digital fashion shows and digital models on, on social media. Um, I look forward to seeing where it goes. I think Optitex is going to play a major role in the sustainability movement because not only does it minimize waste from samples but also from overproduction, a realistic 3D rendering and have it be paired with something like pre-orders before the product even goes into production. And it's becoming such a key part of the industry now all across the field, from design to merchandising to retail. It's integral all the way across. It's not just a pattern maker's tool, it's an industry tool. Our student is going to know design in a way that other people just don't, because what we are doing is teaching smarter design and better technical design. And what's great with that is a lot of those students in there are actually currently working in the industry as technical designers now. And that was with only one, one class under their belt. And this was progressing because we started to see that we hit something with students and we were noticing that our students were picking this up very quickly. So in December, 
2021, it was the first time that we had our cohort graduate with now two levels of Optitex training, as, as you could see and heard from Gifty and Jesse. In 2022, we decided to revise three levels of fashion technology co um, courses because we wanted to make them more industry focused. So we reestablished what an entry, mid, and advanced level was. And something interesting started to happen, and we started to know the, notice this in 2022, where we had an increased student interest in technical and digital jobs. And a lot of our graduates were starting to find jobs as working technical designers and product developers. And the interesting trends that we saw inside of the school was a lot of people finding their place. Because I know when, uh, when I went to design, uh, excuse me, when I went to design school, a lot of it was pushing conceptual, pushing art but I felt a little too analytic and I was always comparing myself to the artistic student next to me. And then we had people that m then decided to move into business and, but were too creative for business. And then here we are with technical design where numbers became creative. And technical design wasn't always the sexy thing, but it's fun. And this is where a lot of the jobs are, and our students were finding their place there. And this is why we really, really wanted to make sure that we had a home for all of those students, which is why in January of 2023, we started putting together the work of building a brand new track to our ecosystem, which was an apparel technical design and product development track that will launch in fall of 2024. And then, of course, as we were building this, we had our amazing announcement of integrating alongside FITM. So we've got forward-thinking education with such a legacy institution coming together. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. So as we started to look at this, we started to see our approach to education in the classroom and our experience because there's a few things that we know. We understand what the students need to be successful. And in that, it, we adapt to meet industry needs because in order for our student to be successful, we need to know what the industry needs. And then we bring that into the classroom because it's ingrained in us to always innovate at ASU because we are number one in innovation and we bring that to the classroom and our ability to bring new findings of the industry into the classroom and to teach our students is only setting them further up for success. There was a couple learner trends that we were finding, especially during post-pandemic. Students wanted options of in-person and online learning options, and that's where we were really starting to focus and building out these opportunities. And in that, as we were talking to more and more students, what we saw was that the student today is vastly different than 10 years ago. They're juggling jobs, careers, some might be coming back to change their jobs or to learn something new. And it isn't as linear as high school to college anymore. It's much more diverse, which is great to see. The younger student was very interesting also because I like to joke around with my students that they can always go to YouTube University because they are screen learning masters. And that was something that we were noticing in the development of our courses was making sure that we had visual assets to assist them throughout this process. That, and coupled with the fact that e-learning has vastly improved over the last few years. It is not as text heavy. We have the ability to interject uh, expressions in there, connect with our students in different ways, and be a part of their lives as they're managing their day-to-days. And this all goes to the fact that students need to be flexible. They want that. And I think that education should be giving that to them as well. This is really interesting, and it was going back to kind of the genesis of building out these technology programs, because um, McKenzie and Company for the State of Fashion in 2021, this came out in 2020, said in 2021, the COVID-19 pandemic will accelerate industry trends with shopping shifting to digital channels and the consumer continuing to champion fairness and social justice. And that to us resonated a lot of our pillars with ASU FITM and the direction in which we were going, and we defended our, our exploration into, into different learning techniques based on the trends that we were seeing. 
In the newest state of fashion in 2023, this is very interesting to us, future-proving, excuse me, future-proving manufacturing. Continued disruptions in supply chain are a catalyst for a reconfiguration of global production. Textile manufacturers can create new supply chain models based around vertical integration, nearshoring, and small batch production enabled by digitalization. So as we were innovating, so was our industry. And this is where what came to a lot of things that we put pen to paper and we wanted to start looking at what future education meant not only to our student but to industry student or student learners as well. So we're really excited to announce a brand new expanded programming for opportunities for students and industry professionals. And this is what we're calling Career Catalyst. So these are all um, learners in the industry looking for new skills. I'm going to start with one that's really exciting, and this is the apparel production machinist. We've developed 10 modules of um, educational learning for people that want to expand or develop skills operating apparel machines. The one that um, we obviously are really excited about as well is the career catalyst for digital uh, pattern making and 3D prototyping. And both of these will be launching in the fall. The innovative approach to this was we were looking at a few things, and this is kind of some of the cornerstones that I look at when I'm developing courses, is I want the courses to be immersive, where we're skill building through repetition. And every time we're going through these repetitions, we're adding layers of information over and over again. Because what this starts to lead to is critical thinking, the ability to examine a problem and solve it digitally. Now, I know a lot of us in, the, in here have gone to fashion school, and if you're not, I heavily recommend it. Um, but I remember when I went to school, when we were drafting the basic bodice dress, it took weeks to do, and then we would need to cut it, and then we would sew it together. And if you were frustrated because you sewed all your layers together, you went to rip it, and then you ripped absolutely everything, and then you had to go through that cycle again. We've been able to look at this and be able to fit digitally and teach our student how to do it within five minutes of explanation. And what we realized is that much like real estate, time is so valuable to our student. And that's inevitably the investment that they're making into education is the time and experience that they're getting. So in that time, they're seeing these real time things happen and how to best critically think to fix them. And on top of this, then, it's the technical and digital skills. Because much like my last point, real-time decision equals real-time results. Because all we I remember being in the classroom and teaching, students love suction-cupped clothing, where they're pressing the muslin very heavy to the form, not realizing what happens when that form starts to move. And in digital, we can see that. And what we're able to see is whether they're focusing on athletic wear or runway or just a great fitting pair of trousers. We're able to watch the model in various different scenarios and they're able to see what their decisions are and what the results were. And this all culminates to the future applicants that we're gonna have, our student that gets out there because they're gonna be more knowledgeable, more thorough, and more precise because they're gonna have these digital and technical skills that be from all of their critical thinking because of immersive learning through repetition. So let's talk a little bit about Career Catalyst because I'm very, very excited and this is in partnership with Optitex. We're launching two uh, pathways with this. We're launching our digital pattern making where you will learn in, through 10 modules the basics through some advanced skills of digital pattern making through Optitex. In conjunction with that too, we have another nine to 10 modules of digital 3D prototyping, where you'll learn all of the aspects of bringing your designs not only to life, but, but being able to leverage them as marketing material and make them look as one-to-one -one in real life as in digital, because there's so much solution in doing that and so many companies are seeing the benefit of doing that. And what we're really excited here to announce as well is successful completion of both of these will give the learner one year of Optitex at no charge. 
And the reason why we're doing this is because we see in Career Catalyst these goals, because we're going to see people with career growth. We're going to stimulate economies with manufacturing. We're going to have industry reshoring, because people who know how to approach a digital solution, both personally, will be able to speak to it in the workplace as well. Because I consulted for a lot of industry companies. And when the pandemic happened, everybody ran to digital and then realized, you know, I don't know how to integrate this. And now they're trying to rework their process rather than seeing schools that are teaching that process and bringing on the right people. This will also allow people to change careers, people that might not be fulfilled as a merchandiser or as an accountant even and wants to start something different. And then this, we all obviously all hope, is going to advance the digital integration both into companies, small, medium, and large. What we're also really excited as well is that next fall, we're launching our brand new apparel technical design and product development track. And that will all be within our new ecosystem uh, of different tracks here at ASU FITM. We've got fashion design, fashion studies, fashion business management, and now apparel technical design and product development. We're going to be bookending this education rooted not only in theory, but also in methodology and practicing. And we're looking at, again, building skills off of one another and making sure that our knowledge is deeply rooted. So we see three levels of different technical design, and this uh, technical design one has already launched, and we've got two amazing students back there who are undergoing it, uh, where they are learning grade. And I, I was dreading that week, learning how to teach students how the body grows, how to fit on a body that is growing. And the response that I've gotten back has been light bulbs going off and the switches going off. And so it's been so great to actually hear that students are seeing really how, the, how bodies are all very different, how they're growing and how to approach fitting techniques on that. We're going to layer on top of that where they're going to start to get exposure into different forms of product like activewear plus and menswear and how to properly approach it. And then finishing with advanced techniques, special te specialty techniques, and advanced styles. And then on the flip side, we're going to continue to harness with Optitex our understanding and deep rooting digital pattern making and fit analysis, where the first level is really going to be learning about drafting, development, and fitting digitally, and then be able to develop off of those into other levels. Because what we're missing in the industry is people knowing practicalities of approaching plus. A lot of people aren't getting that experience because I feel like a lot of schools are limited to the resources that they have. And we're not because we're innovating with the resources we do have. And we're finding ways to approach these topics that allow people to see how to fit a plus next to a standard Missy and make that product worth for both shapes and sizes. So this is our digital integration and things that we're doing a little differently. And in our challenges as we were building out, the first thing was we needed the technology to support it. And we built 25 state-of-the-art computers that were harnessing all the power of uh, OptiTex's 2D and 3D softwares. Computer graphics needed to do high-resolution uh, photorealistic output and photos. We have 50, 50 plus base cloud um, licenses. So this allows uh, our student to work between multi-campuses or at home or on their personal computer if it's set up properly. But it allows them access to move around places as well. On top of that, other companies are also marching toward better digital solutions, and we have Alvanon integration. So what's great about that, all the forms that we have being Alvanon are one-to-one -one as they are in digital. So our students are learning how to fit digitally and physically at the same time and be able to speak to both. All of our courses thus far um, in digital and in technical design come with a video asset component. So this gives students a lot 
of information and ability to reference back to. Because I deal with students that are whizzes at technology because they were born with an iPhone in their hand. And then I get some people that don't know how to turn on a computer. But we want to make this learning experience the same for both. And those visual vis, or video assets are like your sidekick. So you could pause it, rewind, play. Pause it, rewind, play. And that makes it a lot easier for people to work alongside and trust that they are learning because they're doing it themselves. And one thing that we're really proud of, and there's so many of us in here, are the world-class educators that we have at ASU FITM. And it's really the most amazing thing, and I'm so happy to be a part of our faculty group because our programs are taught by industry-based instructors that are bringing current information into the classroom. And that really is an experience unlike anywhere else is because the industry is rapidly changing and our program is always able to adapt. One thing, if we haven't met already, Let's please meet, because one thing we're really proud of is our industry partnerships. Because what we're learning in that is the more industry partnerships that we have, the more conversations that we have. And they're able to help us and guide us in, in the ability to advance our curriculums. And I've been so happy to see in our industry partnerships our connections with internships and experiences that we can give our students and be able to support them at the same time. So a lot of the ways that we work, and this is the OptiText platform if people aren't used to it, is that students are really able to create these one-to-one -one products. So this eliminates the fear of buying expensive fabrics and then ruining them. This shows them that they're capable of fitting and developing these collections digitally, being able to go out into the market, whether it's someone that wants to start up their own company or somebody that wants to do a digital collection or play around with it or, I don't know, maybe go to a salesman and show them a capsule collection you developed and see if that salesman will get behind you. I mean, the, the opportunities are pretty endless when it all comes to it. And what we're excited about as well as very similarly to our career catalysts, our students are going to leave with successful completion and a degree. Um, we'll leave our curriculum with a one year of Optitex software to help them get started in either their careers, advancing their careers, or moving to companies that they want. So I thank you, everyone. And with that, as I'm getting a little raspy, that's my... Um, telltale that it's time to move on. I'd love to invite up uh, uh, Venera, who is the production pattern maker and 3D artist for Avalon Apparel, and Roz, who's the head pattern maker at Beyond Yoga and Levi Strauss. And we're going to have a little bit of an industry conversation about digital integration into the apparel industry. The handheld's always creeping out because I'm too afraid I'm going to blow everybody's eardrums out. So why don't we get started? Um, Venera, if you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Working? Yep. Yes. <laughs> um, I work in fashion industry already for over like 25 years. I'm a pattern maker, currently production pattern maker. I started my career as a sample maker and through, went through sample maker and technical designer, first pattern maker, and the production pattern maker. And uh, currently, I'm working with a company named Avalon Apparel. And um, right now, I am doing 3D, um, OptiTech 3D design. <laughs> and uh, it's already two years since my company wanted me to start doing 3D. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Ross? Um, hi. Um, so I've been in the industry since um, I was 19 years old. Um, so I'm going on my uh, 49th year in the industry. I started out as a pattern maker. I literally walked into a company and said I could do the patterns uh, straight out of school. They were like, great. He said, I'm going on vacation. I'll be back on Monday. 
can you do these five garments for me? And they were dresses. I'd never done them before. And so I figured out how to knock them off. He gave me five garments to do. I knocked them off. They had very little corrections. And he said, you know, I really didn't think you, you were going to be able to do this. And I said, oh, of course. I was lying through my teeth. And my career started, of course, I went to trade tech to be a designer, but couldn't find a design job or an assistant design job. And so I got in where I could, and then I just kind of grew. I've been a pattern maker, a designer, technical designer. Back in the 80s, um, we were going full throttle, and they sent my job as a pattern maker over to overseas. Yes, that part. And so everything just stagnated. Um, my salary stagnated, what I was doing stagnated, but I love what I do. So then what was I supposed to do? I didn't want to be a technical designer only. I enjoy the process of pattern making. So I just kind of stuck it out. And through the ups and downs and all of the things that I thought that I would be doing, um, the what I'm doing now is honestly what I thought that I would, where I would be 30 years ago. So to be on the tail end of my career and have the joy of, of being where I'm at right now is, there are no words for it. I was stolen from Reformation, the dress company. Mm -hmm. And the, the Beyond Yoga came after me. They said, look, you can come on a Saturday morning, and you can do, uh, and we'll have the whole crew here. It's a mile and a half away from my home. It took me six minutes to get there. And so I said, OK. He said, can you be here at 1030, 1030, 11 o'clock? I was, yeah, that, yes, I can do that. I show up. I hand him my resume. His, his name was Jack Watkins. He said to me, I don't need your resume. We need to be giving you ours. He puts my resume on the table, and we walk into the room where I was going to be interviewed. And I thought, this is going to be fun. <laughs> and they basically offered me the job, head pattern maker. Here's what they didn't tell me. There were 10 freelance pattern makers. And literally over the course of a year, I got rid of every single one of them. And what Jack said, he was, he was uh, VP of manufacturing and uh, product development. And when they decided to bring the patterns inside, they said, oh, well, what should we, what should we get? Should we, should we go out there and find Lectra? Should we go out there and find Gerber? Jack said, find your pattern maker and buy the system that she works on. And I worked on Optitex. So I come in. They immediately, we, we get the whole Optitex system set up. And it's fabulous. There's nothing like it. It's intuitive in terms of, oh, there's a pair of scissors. I can cut my, my pattern from there. Oh, wait a minute. They have a little two little walking feet. Oh, I can walk my pattern and see if it works. This is the best thing since sliced toast. And so uh, Beyond Yoga was uh, acquired by Levi Strauss two years ago. And I became the head pattern maker of Levi Strauss Global, along with Beyond Yoga. So that's my story. That's amazing. Yeah, but it is I, amazing. I, well, and I think, I think what you were starting on actually mm -hmm. brings us really nicely to our first question. Mm -hmm. And uh, for everybody, I'm just looking at this. I'm not texting. Um, from the start of your career to now, how have you found digital integration vital to your day to day? It takes the grief and aggravation out of doing patterns. I came up doing patterns by hand on uh, 125 weight manila 
pattern paper. There wasn't anything else. You had the long shears with the short handles. Okay, we all know what that looks like. If you've never seen it, you can find it in a book. Um, <laughs> it's true. Um, and I'm of the generation that they, that were taught as children, don't touch it, you'll break it. And so when computers started coming around, there wasn't, I, I, was, I was petrified. I'll break the computer, they'll charge me, I, I can't do it. Someone said to me, you can't break the computer. And I was like, what do you mean I can't break it? Of course you can, you cannot break the computer. And so I started learning little things on a computer. Then I had the opportunity to learn computer patterns and I was like, this is so easy. Why did I fight it all these years? The amount of patterns that I can do in a day um, in Optitex is three times the amount that I can actually do by hand. And the best day I ever had on Optitex doing patterns because we had a problem and no one showed up for work and everything had to be done. I literally did 15 patterns in one day. And they fit. <laughs> so the amount of time that it takes to, to um, do your pattern, the efficiency to do your pattern, the lack of, of money that it actually takes, you are saving so much money by doing three, 2D pattern. I haven't really gotten to the 3D. I've been pounding on them to do it. I got an opportunity to do it 15 years ago. And I walked into Beyond Yoga and said, we have to do 3D. And they're finally get. I've been at Beyond Yoga for eight years. And they're finally getting ready to pull the trigger on it. And I've been pounding away and pounding away. We need to save money. And when they finally get the fact that, gee, we can save a lot of money, money's time. And, 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 and when they finally figure that part out, we can finally do what needs to be done, which is Optitex 3D. Wonderful. How about you? Um, about 30 years ago, when I started doing my first patterns, um, that time, because I was still learning, um, we cut the patterns right on the fabric. It wasn't, there was no pattern paper because there was no money. Uh, there was actually no sewing machine. When I was start first sewing, no overlock, no sewing machine. So I cut the pattern, I made a pattern on the fabric. I left one inch seam allowances just in case I have a mistake to revise. And everything was sewn by hand. I sew by hand and I drop loop inside stitch uh, imitating overlock. That's how was my first garments created. I remember my puffy sleeves. Um, um, about like uh, five years later, I got, you know, this the fit sewing machine like that. <laughs> I got that machine, so and the um, needle was too thick, the thread was too thick, the machine didn't, so it was German machine, very good, but it was a good experience, still no overlock. And that's how we started, like uh, for the like older generation, that's what, how we did. And then when I was looking like a pattern maker, 25 years experience, just cuts like that on the fabric, and I was like, oh my God, like uh, I didn't think one day, there is a computers came out, and my company asked me, do you want to go for the school, like uh, for pattern making school? I'm like, uh, okay. So the company sent me, I took four days, I believe it was downtown LA here, and now I'm working at the place, and I, I was honest with the, um, with the um, owners, designers, I said, I know pattern making, I don't know computer, I don't have big experience, so if it will be take longer time, you know, just <laughs> bear with me, but, what was the, at that time, what was very big my plus. So there was a first pattern makers who were manual. There was a grader who was on the computer. 
and they didn't have a middle person. So here I came, they were just sit and do this production on the computer, and that's when it start going much faster. We have five jackets in five different fabrics. You know, each fabric reacts differently. Mm -hmm. We have one of the jackets in leather. So in a computer, 3.8 seam allowance, change it five eight, uh, mm -hmm. to the half an inch seam allowance, everything much more faster. And the grading, manual grading to the manual marking, you know, you have to make this manila paper with staplers, with everything. And here, it's just plotted all the marker. Later, I learned how to make marker, and I learned how to do the grading. And then here is accurate yield already, and accurate fabric. Like, you you going to, like, a, it's next level. Long story short. So one day, one my um, production manager, sample room manager, he said, give me one pattern, and I'll give you 25 styles. And I was thinking, how are you going to do 25 styles? You know? So. What he did, one pattern, it was a girl's dress. Then he cut seven inch longer, seven inch shorter, with a bow in the back, in a lace, in white, in black, with a lining, with a sleeves, without lining. And he made a 25 styles samples out of one pattern. Today, seeing this 3D optic technology, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my god, that's how you do this. This is a one, one pattern, and then you do the 25 style, but you don't need to cut all those samples. You don't need to do manually, you know, the, you, you do the placement, and there is a, like a scallop at the bottom, or like a flowers on the side of the dress. Of course, it is different style already, but instead of all that, you have it in a computer. You have a line sheet with all the like front, side, back, and it's visually already brings you vision. I remember we had a, it's approximately like this wall. It was a Manila patterns hanging, mm -hmm. and the company had to have all that. And then, can you revise 10, 25? So I'm going into that closet in between mm -hmm. those, and I'm start looking for that. 10, 25, and then can you add three inch to the ties? Can you do this? So this needs to be not a copy paste. It needs to be traced, you know, and then taped. And there was like a much more steps today. You open the new pattern, you copy paste, you have that. And uh, this is how um, reduce the timing. It's multiply the styles. I had um, one jacket. It was uh, 215 pieces. Good. So it was a bestseller also. And uh, we ended up, uh, designers, they want a black self and the white contrast. And then later they change it. They want a white self and the black contrast. And then they want to uh, have a black top and the green contrast with the flowers. And then they want a leather mm -hmm. top and fabric. I ended up with a five patterns, 215 pieces. It's over 1,000 pieces. And the sample makers couldn't sew it. Today, once I put in a 3D, everything, my pieces in there, I printed, I plotted. So you have it, and you know that saving time, saving all this, those samples, and it's my, it's like a big step, big step. Looking 30 years back mm -hmm. and looking today, this is a big, very big step. Yeah. Mm. I think it's interesting because we see how far the industry has come. Because yes. I, I too remember the Manila yes. days, um, and kind of taking a look at that. And, and when you brought up grade, um, and that's something obviously when we were talking that I was highlighting because students now hear grade and they're connecting the dots. But what digital is able to do is give them visual understanding yeah. of that and being able to fit size sets digitally to um, prove their grade or to mm -hmm. see if it's accurate and see how it works on the form. So I think that that's been to a huge step forward in, um, in the industry as well. Let me see if I can open up my phone for the next question. Um, what is one of the digital tools that you can't live without in Optitex? What is one tool that you always use in Optitex that you live by? The moving of the points to create a style line. Mm -hmm. It's a control uh, M move it. It, it. You can actually change anything and everything just with the touch of your fingertips. 
So you're not tracing a pattern, making it all over again, like she was saying, that you don't have to trace it over, add, change the line, do this, do that. It's, oh, boop, boop, boop. Oh, let me get my, let me get, you know, my mouse. Yeah. My mouse and two fingers. And you've changed the pattern. It's, it's amazing. It's fun, too. It's fun. Yeah. I, I just want to say one more thing, and I don't know if you're going to talk about this later. Are we talking about grading later? We can. Okay. I just want to say this one thing, and I don't know how many people in here have seen this, but there was actually a grading machine that you connected the pattern pieces to, and you learned how to move each pattern piece with the grading machine as opposed to going into the computer and clicking a couple of buttons and you've created. So each and every size, each and every piece, you would take a hard paper pattern, clip it into the machine, have to look at the little lines that were in on the machine for the measurements, an eighth, a sixteenth, and that's how much you would move this whole pattern piece around. It is phenomenal how many patterns can be graded by our grading. We have a grading team, and we're doing so much mm -hmm. that there's no way that they could keep up with that amount of work. There used to be, I worked for a company one time that had 25 pattern makers and 10 graders, and that's how we worked. And it's probably the same amount of patterns that me and four of the pattern makers do now, and two graders. And, and the standards that a company can hold and, and fit standards and cohesion. Yes, and the fact like she was saying that you don't need a wall of patterns with pattern hooks. Yep, where you edit one and then you have to do it manually through every single size. For, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about, uh, what's your favorite tool in Optitex? Um, coincidentally, moving points. <laughs> <laughs> you know that um, there is a tool, it's a multi-move, multi-point move, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is my favorite. So whatever I have, I need to extend the shoulder or I need to move the armhole. Mm -hmm. So this is, I select multi-point vertical mm -hmm. or I select multi-point horizontal. So I move it this way or that way. But before that, it's a lot of geometry. Once you calculate, okay, quarter inch here, half an inch here, and then once you select squares, you move this, you move this, you move that, and then once your measurements is there, this is my first favorite tool, multi-move point, and the single move point also. Mm -hmm. So this is my second favorite tool, but mm, let me tell you about one tool what I like the most. <laughs> like I like these two tools, yes. Um, design, offset, uh, not parallel, but uh, offset uneven. So this is my best tool, why? Because I have my, let's say, my shoulder, and I need a zero at the neck and quarter inch in here. So I draw the line, zero mm -hmm. here, quarter, and my line highlights in a red or blue, mm -hmm. if it's cut line or um, draw line. And then I have my original pattern, and I have all my lines in red or in blue. So mm -hmm. I already revised pattern with this um, move offset. Design, create offset line. Mm -hmm. So And then I revise. Once I see all the new piece, you know, then I revise piece. Yeah. yeah. I think my favorite would be the extend parallel, being able mm -hmm. to give something length with just yes. control P. Right. Just extend it yes. really quick. Great to move on. Um, so what impact, if any, have you seen products benefit from digital transformation? Consistency. Consistency straight across the board. Um, you don't have to worry that a point is going to be left out. You don't have to worry that the, a curve, um, an angle, is going to be distorted because you, you have it all right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to worry when someone grades a pattern that the, the um, amount of grade 
it will stay consistent if this needs to be a quarter of an inch and we're only doing this three sixteenths. You can do that straight across the board without someone having, you. they have to double check themselves. Mm -hmm. oh, and then you go back and you see a, um, a graded, prior to Optitex, prior to the digital world, when you did a graded set, you would have to line them all up, all the paper patterns, line each and every one of them up, and if something was off, you had to figure out where it was off. And I'm here to tell you that if it was off, you had to redo everything from where it is that you think you messed up. Mm -hmm. Hands down my favorite. Or if you're grading too much and you decide to decrease it an eighth of an inch, that's all those patterns again that you would need to have cut for those And then out. my favorite is always when the designer tells you, can you move this style line an eighth of an inch? And you're like... Nope, not now. <laughs> that's what you want to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, really, I don't know. I don't want to do that. And you have to cut out the entire pattern all over again because this one line that she had you asked to asked you to change is connected to six other pattern pieces and please believe me it happened and i won't say the company but it happened and it was before computer patterns and like you were saying you could move all the lines and do everything and and check and there's all the little numbers mm -hmm. and all you got to do is check your numbers mm -hmm. make sure that everything's smooth and and it's good that's mine. And what about you? Um, I see there is like a lot of benefits of the Optitech 3D and the 3D, um, the all these softwares. The, um, what I want to talk about um, is, um, you know, that um, one of my first styles when I working in a 3D, I had a kid's jumper. I didn't see the sample yet, and I was working on the 3D. I applied fabric, everything. And in the 3D, I saw that my rice, the crutch is short, is pulling. Like, I see it's not enough. And I'm like, um, no, I think the on actual sample, it was OK. It's supposed to be OK. But after when I, I was um, keep working on it, and then I saw like my smoking is a little tight, and my HP AS to the waist point is tight. My my inseam inseam was actually too long, but my seat, my crotch is too short. And then when I saw it on the actual sample, this is what I understood: that 3D gives you, showing you all the problems before you get the sample. Like uh, if your like, arm hold, the shoulder slope is too high or your neck too wide or like everything, you see those mistakes. If your under sleeve, the seam is too long, you know, you, you can see all the drug lines in the 3D before you cut the sample. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter, it's a woven or it's neat. So this is a, for the pattern maker. You know your problem before you made the sample. It's like a big advance. So for me, uh, there is lots of pluses, but this is one of the important plus what I see. Yeah. Wonderful. And I think that actually sets my next question up, which was um, how did your company handle changing either from different softwares to Optitex or just the overall digital integration into your workflow? Well, like I told you, they hired the pattern maker and then bought the Optitex. So they were so excited that when I tell you that we had 10 freelancers uh, prior to me coming on, not only did the 10 freelancers take total advantage of the company, um, they didn't want to let them go because they didn't understand what a pattern maker that actually knew what they were doing that would, and I wasn't going to take advantage of them, the amount of money that they would save. When I tell you the uh, freelance pattern makers did a minimum of 10 fits per garment, it was between 10 and 15 fits per garment. And when I came in and I said, that's way too much, this is highway robbery. Because each and every one of them had done it for 10 years, they were like, well, this is the way this is, there's no other way. I said, I can, I can bring, take that to production in two to three fits. They were like, yeah, right. So when they finally allowed me to do my first group without any interference from any of the 
um, freelancers for the garments, for the styles that they gave me, had minimal corrections. Two had zero corrections, and one they once they saw the actual styling, they decided to change the style. The owner of the company says to me, oh, this is a fluke, don't get used to it. Have two years go by. Accidentally did <laughs> a garment and needed to fit it four times. My boss said to me, don't let that ever happen again. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And it hasn't, but it was just one of those fluke times. I was like, so we, we, we go from 15 down to four at one time, and now you know, you've gotten accustomed to you know, the, the two, three fits, and it's in production already. It's going to bulk. And, and that is, that's the one thing that I think that Optitex has been able to do. It's the consistency in the fit. And the other thing is, is that whenever I go into a company, I create a, a pattern library. So whether I'm there or not, you can reach into the pattern file, pull out a pattern, and you know what, this is, we can use this sleeve and this, uh, this neckline, we can use this boo boo boo, you can match all the pieces together, and I don't have to be there, and I know that the fit is gonna be okay. Um, when I started first learning the um, pattern making, computer pattern making, it was Tuka pattern making. Yes. And then a couple years later, I switched the company and it was Gerber pattern making. I learned the Gerber. And then years later, I came to Avalon. Avalon, in the beginning, they actually had a pad software. Mm -hmm. So um, I learned a little bit pad. And then they got the um, Optitech 3D. So I have uh, knowledge of <laughs> all those most used use, use software. But the thing is, first of all, about um, Optitech, what is the special about this? Number one, Optitech 2D and the Optitech 3D. So it's a two windows I have on two of my monitors, and it's the same software, and I'm working on the same software. I called one time my factories. We had about 10 factories, and I asked what software you use, because we DXF mm -hmm. patterns to send to factories and uh, receive the um, patterns back. And the DXF is a universal format. It works on the um, Illustrator, on Photoshop, on Gerber, on Tuka. Or it works on even it works on AutoCAD for the architects. So DXF software, DXF file is a universal. It used so the factory sends to us, we send to them, we send to the store, store sends to us the blocks, everything. So DXF is the one what we um, keep using, you know, but we use the, we, we can use a zip file also, mm -hmm. but the, only if you on the same software, like if it's different software, it has to be DXF. And um, yeah, this, this is the, DXF is the one, the file what we use, like. Yeah, DXF um, is always the interesting ones because I get a lot working with global factories all over the world, DXF imports. I always find that um, when they import specifically into Optitex, they're a lot cleaner and ready to plug and play and be ready to go. Um, so as pattern makers, have you noticed any skills or knowledge difference between students and interns that have had digital experience? Yes. Um, it's easier for them to, I'm a teacher. I'm a natural born teacher. Anything that I know how to do, I can teach you how to do it. And so what I did, when I walked into Beyond Yoga, because I was already in my late 50s, I said, you're gonna have to give me people to train. I said, I'm not gonna be able to be here for forever. Oh, Roz, stop. They gave me one person. He was two years younger than me. Um, and then COVID happens. And I kept on them. It's like we're growing. We need another pattern maker. I need to train somebody the way that I think that 
will be more beneficial to the company. And so we have people that come in that already know Optitex. I had a young lady that came in. She knew Optitex. I could tell her, do this, change this up, do that. And she's also a draper. So it made everything so much more alive. I call pattern makers that don't know what draping is and don't know how to, I, I consider Optitex the tool of the century. I really do. I, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. But you need to be able to test what it is that you're doing because every, like he was saying earlier, People learn by doing it over and over and over again, so by rote, basically. And you understand what a curve is supposed to look like. You understand what a woven armhole looks like as opposed to a knit armhole. And if you don't already know that and all you're doing is numbers, it, it looks like it looks like that. You can actually see the difference. But when you have a uh, pattern maker, a young person that comes in and they understand the, the curvature of the body, whether it's a main line for Missy, Junior, or a plus, you can actually see the difference in the quality of the look of the garment. And that's what's so important about the digital age is being able to see what you can create on a screen as opposed to, like she was saying earlier, I got my fabric, we made it, and we, I gave myself an inch, and, and then I had to sew it up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because when they already know what it's supposed to look like, and there's, there's just not a lot of time that's wasted. Mm -hmm. So I. So um, about the dig digital technologies. So students with experience of digital technology. Um, what I um, what is a digital technology? Like a, for example, person knowing Paint, Illustrator, Photoshop. It's also digital technology. Computer like pattern making. Um, depends of, on the level of the digital technology. For example, I have today my managers and technical designers, manager assistants who have very good eye for fitting in a 3D. And they also certify it with a store for the a partner fitter, what we can approve our own fits. So when I send my 3D renders and uh, they look front side back and they see the drug lines or they see there is a bubble on the sleeve or they see something, they say, oh, Venera, can you like uh, this and that? So it's like a, my first digital fit. You see, this kind of thing, sometimes I don't see everything, sometimes designer don't see everything. Sometimes that's why we get like a six, seven people together in the emails and we forward each other. So this kind of, it's a big help for me if we force them back two, three times renders and it will be perfect, it's like a third fit, mm -hmm. but it's a digital fit. And those technical designers, assistants, managers, designers who have this knowledge with, um, uh, with 3D and seeing all that, of course, it's a big benefit for the company, for industry, and also for me, it uh, simplifies my work, much makes much more easier. And also, for example, like um, if technical designer looking for a job, and the company sees in the resume knowledge of 3D. Um, fit like a uh, design, of course, this is a big benefit and it's a future. I was so surprised when my designer, one of my designers, when I needed to leave earlier and she stayed later and she sent three tech packs to the factories. There was a revision. I was surprised. I was like a designer doing the tech pack, able to do with the specs, with everything. So designer doing 3D today, it's kind of like a head higher. You know, like all pattern makers, technicals, everybody appreciate it. And the sample makers, it doesn't matter. Like a, all the jobs still needed. We still need produce production, and we still need to do the samples. But if the designer with a 3D, if the technical with a 3D eye, if the Pattern maker knows this is like a bigger 
bigger market for like a better market. You know, you can find better jobs and uh, um, companies looking forward to that and the stores too. Wonderful. And um, for our last question, uh, something a little fun. Obviously, with ASU FITM, we're all about future forward and future thinking and innovation. So what more from digital technologies would you like to see brought to the market? So this can include AR fitting rooms. This can include more digital fitting rooms. I, I, the one thing that I think would be really helpful, and I know that we already have it, is that I think it's important that um, the avatars, mm -hmm. um, that everyone has an avatar and that you can uh, adjust in size. Um, we have a plus size fit model. Now, for the majority of people that don't know, uh, a lot of companies will take a size small and grade it up to a 4X and you cannot do that. At some point, you have to stop and think, gee, how much longer can this top go? And who's going to wear it at six feet tall? I think having the avatars of the different sizes, mm -hmm. let me tell you what we do at Beyond Yoga. So we have our uh, small person who is our regular fit model. We have our plus fit model. They're literally both the same height. But prior to us having the fit model that we have today, we had one that was two inches shorter than the mainline fit model. And that's because the, uh, the average size woman is 5'4 and a size 14. She doesn't get any taller when she's a size 18. She doesn't get any taller when she's a size 2X or 3X or 4X. And so at some point, you have to stop making the garment long, just longer and, uh, and longer and wider. At some point, it has to, you have to, okay, we have to stop here and just make it bigger, but have it conform to uh, a plus body. And when you can see that, see the different size avatars next to each other, so you don't have to make the patterns, like she was saying, you can just go into 3D and say, this, we have the exact same garment. We have two different body types, but we want them to look have the equity and how pretty they look. My grandson walked into a fitting, I was doing a fitting on, a, um, on our plus mm -hmm. model, and she had on this pink little bodysuit set thing, and he walks in, he's, eight, he's 19, and says, oh, she's cute. I said, yeah, that's our plus, I put it on mute. I said, yeah, that's our plus size fit model. He said, she looks amazing. She's had a size 50, inch hip, but he still said, he's like, she looks amazing. And we need to start thinking about our avatars and having them side by side so that when we do the fits, we can do it like that. And also in dressing rooms so that you can see something when you go into an, um, go into a showroom or when you go into a store and you actually see uh, you don't want to go in and try everything on. You don't. But it would be great to go into a store um, or for, for a buyer to go into a showroom and see what it looks like on a size 16 and what it looks like on a size 4. That's wonderful. So um, let me see that um, how I see. Let me tell how I see it. Okay. Me personally, I'm shopping for the clothes in two of my favorite stores, okay? It's a Ross, and it's a small boutique in the North Hollywood, just in case. <laughs> Who, you know that um, I like it, but today we are busy people. We don't have time to go to the store. I don't go for the shopping for the last like two, three years. I do everything Amazon, except food and clothes. Food and clothes, I have to go to the store, so I wish. All the stores, 
Ross, that small boutique have a virtual fitting room. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need to go to the store. I'll just go to the fitting room for that, mm -hmm. like a boutique, whatever they, uh, they bring clothes from Europe, okay? Doesn't matter what size. I know um, Avalon, uh, I mean, um, Optitech 3D, the mannequin, you can fix the measurements to your measurements. You can put chest and waist and hips and whatever. You even can change the posture. So I'm building my mannequin, and this is me. And I'm selecting the garment. I want to see it right here. I want to see front side back. I want to see how it is. And I order, and this is shipped next day to my door. And then I don't have to return because it's a bad fit. So this is my uh, vision, like future. I hope all the stores, doesn't matter, it's a big, I know already big stores, they're doing that. Like, uh, um, but I wish, so whole industry, <laughs> all the stores to be, to have a fitting room, virtual fitting room. Yeah. And it's funny with the virtual fitting rooms and things like that, um, and maybe I could pitch this to Optitex later, but I always, uh, because I work a lot with international factories, um, being a technical designer, and the one thing that I saw with digital that I thought would be interesting, because I know that we're moving to AR goggles and things like that, and we've worked with factories all overseas, but being able to have our overseas factories have vision goggles and we could too and have the parametric model in the center mm -hmm. of the room and be able to fit and work together to find solutions because mm -hmm. not all of us are so lucky to have you both amazing pattern makers and we have to rely on the comments and and innovative ways of uh, expressing the changes that needed to be made. So I think if there was one step to bring it closer, that could be one as well. You know what, actually, I just remembered that um, in the United States here, we can basically find all the models to the sizes, you know, extra small, small, medium, large. But mm -hmm. you know, some countries, like for example, China, they can't find the plus models. Right. They can't find the uh, models to the standard European standard. And this is very difficult for them to do the fitting, like how you do the pants, how you right. check it like when you sit down and get up. So actually, this is very good, like a virtual uh, fitting room. Yeah. Coming soon. <laughs> well, from the ASU FITM family, thank you both so much for joining us on this panel. It's been an absolute thank pleasure. You. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So with that, um, I'm going to introduce Christy, who is OptiTex's 2D and 3D solutions expert, um, to show some high-level OptiTex things. <laughs> Hi, everybody. For anybody who I haven't worked with yet here, my name is Christy Holsizer. I've been with Optitex for about four years now. Prior to that, I was in the fashion industry for over 20 years, um, worked for some major brands in both design and technical design. And once I got trained on Optitex, decided that that was my future, and <laughs> they allowed me to come in and work for them, so I've been with them ever since. Um, so I'm going to give you kind of a high-level overview today of where we are going, kind of a little bit of our roadmap, um, but also some of the things that we've been talking about today as far as saving time, saving money, sustainability, all of these things and how we are reacting to that within Optitex and how it is helping. Okay, so a little about the company. If anybody doesn't know this, we've been in the industry for over three decades. We have over 8,000 customers, 30,000 users in 87 different countries. We have a global presence all over the world. So North America, Europe, India, Asia. And this is where you're gonna find, you know, your factories, but also um, many of the brands that we're using as well. When we look at the life cycle, really where Optitex shines is going to be in that development stage. So the product development, the product management, and then going into the production. So it's kind of like the pre-production, the production, the development. It's going to take us through. We have many different modules that cover it from the start to the finish. 
I'm just going to highlight a couple of those today as I kind of um, show you the software live. Okay. So big conversations. We've already heard some of this today. I am not going to read through this whole document because I don't want to depress us all. But <laughs> the environmental footprint of fashion, um, I will just read out this one statement about four down. The fashion industry is responsible for 8 to 10 percent of humanity's carbon emissions, more than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. Let that sink in for a minute, okay? So what we are doing here, this is all leading up to why we are looking at digital and why it is so important. It wasn't just COVID. Um, you know, this has been coming for a long time, and we need to make some changes. So sustainability-wise, of course, you're going to improve your costing. You're going to minimize the amount of waste. But we're also going to minimize raw materials, color, um, color, water, fuel resources, all of these things that are impacting our environment. Um, Optitex is helping with that, along with helping your own brands really save on those costs, be much more efficient in the life cycle. OK. So with that, I am going to go ahead and start the live portion of the demo. I just want to say a few words about avatars, big conversations that we've heard already. Um, as far as our avatar choices, currently Optitex has parametric avatars, meaning that they can be sized. So we will see that in the live demo, we'll see exactly how you can look at the same style on various fit models. Again, when you can't get those jump size models in for your fitting, sometimes it's very difficult or they're just not available. This is a great way to see those jump sizes, to check your grade, as Alex was saying earlier. Um, so we'll, we'll look at all of this live. We also have dance avatars, which are really great for visual. So that girl that you saw on the front screen before I came up was a Daz. Um, and these are really great for marketing, for getting your message across. Coming soon, we have a library of Optitex default avatars that we are building. And these are going to really um, encapsulate all different kinds of body shapes. So we have these that are going to be available through the OCloud for you to download. Um, and really excited about it. It's, it's a little bit more inclusive of different body types. So different than being able to size your own, this is going to be kind of ones that are already set up within the system that you are free to use. And we also have, if you are working on scans, so we are securing rights currently with different scans. Currently, we do have some, of course, with um, Alvanon we do, um, but some other companies as well that we're working on. This is a company called the Bureau that we're working with. They do very realistic, lifelike scans of their actual fit models. Um, okay. And also coming up is soft body avatars. So this is going to be something that is in the roadmap. Um, we don't have a direct time yet, but super exciting, especially for people who are doing athletic wear, compression garments. Very important to have that tension to be able to see how the garment is reacting on a soft body tissue like a real human. So this is in the works coming soon. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and open up before I go on here and show you a little bit of the actual software as it is right now. So I have here just a basic dress. And what this allows us to do in the software is, as we have been talking about, work in the 2D and the 3D together. So this is really beneficial for learning, for building that confidence, um, but also for redoing, reducing the amount of samples that you may need. 
What I'm gonna show you right now, let me just make sure that this is the correct, you'll see now that we have in version 23 and forward, 23 and forward, if you haven't seen this already, we have the option to go into a GPU rendering mode, okay? So you still have your CPU here, but you also have your GPU. So when I click OK, you're going to see it switch into that GPU mode. And it will just take a second to switch over once I start to simulate this. But you're going to see the difference, I think, right away of the actual simulation in the GPU. And this is something we're working on. I'll just mention that there's a lot of um, tools that still need to be addressed here, but really exciting to get that more accurate kind of drape. And you can see now we have an adjust tool that allows you to do styling to really get this kind of exactly the way that you want it on the avatar. Okay, but look at that, that drape in the front. I mean, it's really beautiful um, compared to the CPU. You're gonna get much more detail out of this and it's going to be much more accurate. So I wanted to show you that when you come out of this window, currently you have to close out. In the upcoming versions, you won't have to do that. It will just immediately flip back and forth for you, just an FYI. Um, but now we have this on here. I'm switching back to that CPU window so I can kind of analyze this a little bit more. Use these tools that we've been talking about. I'm just gonna go back here to my toolbox. And you have over here all of these tools. So now I'm able to use these, compare it to my 3D. If I want to say walk, here's that amazing walk tool that Roz was talking about so with the little footsteps. And we can simply just scroll down. So when I get, say, to the bottom here and something is off, this looks pretty good. But if I wanted to, I'm going to go right into that move tool. And now I can true this up or make any adjustments that I want. Um, so, you know, everything that you would do when you're normally analyzing a pattern is what you're going to do here. Um, and what it does is it allows you to view the pattern, check your balance, look at the measurements, all much quicker. But the beauty of this is, just gonna flip that back to the grain line, the beauty of this is that you don't have to get another sample made. So when I am done with these changes, what I can do then is I can go back into my 3D and I can review it. So at this point, maybe this is a first sample, right? Now I can open up these windows, and guess what? Here are all those sizes that we've created. I can look at different poses. So in my, say, size 14, I'm looking at a size large knit dress, and now I can look at that tension map. So here is the weft direction of the fabric that I've chosen. Within the fabrics, of course, we have a library. You can customize these, get your own tested. Um, but these go through the testing so that the actual drape, all of the properties of this are exactly as the real or as close as possible to the real. So when I am looking at this, this is a Lycra, so it has a lot of stretch to it. But I can put my cursor over different parts and you're gonna see the 2D and the 3D measurement. This is allowing us to analyze, is my size 14 grade good with this fabric that I've chosen? Do I need to adjust the pattern? Do I need to adjust the fabric? All of those things that you do, again, in a regular fitting, you're analyzing all of that here in a digital format. I can look at that same pose on my size small. So let's go down there and see if we get a different stretch a little bit. So it looks like maybe my grade, I'm getting less here than in my larger size. Clue to me that I need to adjust that grade. Maybe it's not correct for the, the bigger sizes. We did recently add here an XY tension, which we used to have. We've added it back, but this allows you to do kind of a cross reference. It's basically combining those two. And again, if I put my cursor over certain areas, you're gonna see on the thermometer there how it moves up and down. Okay, so let's go back to our regular pose here. 
And I'll just show you a couple more things. Of course, you have your measurement tools in here. You have your spring view, which allows you to view um, internally. Let me turn off my stretch map. There we go. So here you're able to see all your style lines really clearly and check your balance. You can see that side seam pulling forward a little bit. Again, all those things you would normally analyze, I'm doing here. I can come in here. I do have some edit tools in here. I can do a basic digitizing draw. Um, but I also have the ability here to make some edits off of that. So if I am going in, for example, and I'm going to use my 3D digitizer, I can come up, say, let's say to this neckline and say I want to lower it down to a certain point. So I can draw that in, and it's automatically going to indicate on my pattern exactly how much I need to adjust that. And then again, using those great tools, I can now come in here and I can adjust the measurement. So it's telling me exactly how much I need to adjust that. I can use those movement tools, make the adjustment, and then update the 3D. So this is all part of that 2D to 3D, saving time, saving the amount of samples that you are getting in, um, and certainly saving cost. So let's clear this. OK. All right. Um, of course, within the system, you have the ability, once you are happy with your product here, you have the ability, you can come in here and create measurement charts based off of the pattern. Save those within your file so everything's within file. You have the ability to grade as well. So I can come in here. If I turn on my grade on the bottom, I'm able to view that really easily. I have a grading window here. So you have full control over how this is graded, how it is stacked, how it is nested um, very quickly and easily. Okay, the grade as well, you can separate out the pieces, which is really nice. Some people prefer to view them unnested, and then you can nest it right back up as, as quickly and easily. All right, so I'm just going to pull up the PowerPoint again to show you some things that are on the roadmap. Really exciting when we're talking about the technical part of the development and really um, the fit. You'll see here that we are working on a 3D geometry adjust. So most of these tools that I'm showing you that we're coming up with are going to be within the 3D window. You'll see this 3D window here looks a little bit differently, has all these tools included. But this one here is a, an adjust. So it allows you to adjust in 3D. If, for example, I want to make this a little bit shorter, and you'll see that it changes the pattern and it changes your 3D right away. So this is the goal that we're going to. It's just giving us, it's giving you guys a little bit more robust tool to work with to really do more of a true 3D fitting um, than you may have right now. The other one that I want to show you are the technical tools. Again, very much has to do with fitting on the actual digital avatar. So we're going to be adding more measure tools than what we have currently. A draw feature, other than that digitizer I just showed you, this one is going to be like a real um, chalk or marker pen, like as if you are walking up to your fit model and you're actually using chalk. And um, that will relay back to the 2D pattern. And then alignment tools, just some new alignment to make sure that your balance is correct and some new tools to assess and analyze your fit as far as the tension maps are concerned. So again, it's just going to be a bit more robust than you have right now. It's going to give you some more information other than the 2D and the 3D stretch to help you really figure out how you need to adjust that pattern a little bit better. So some exciting things coming up. Um, OK. And I just want to go back now and show you, this is kind of what I call the, um, you know, fun part of the 3D, the finishing touches, is really putting on those finishing details that give it that lifelike 
a, um, image in the end, and we're really trying to get to that image so we can get alignment, so we can get sign off, whatever we need. We have a full library of rigid trims. This is just a sampling that you can use. You can also customize these, okay? So very flexible with the hardware that you're bringing in. Um, the software, Optitex also has a full library of stitch types. These were all done for 3D. So when you choose one of these, it's going to look flat until you get into that photorealistic mode. And then you're gonna really see the nice high, low, um, kind of leveling of the stitches, which uh, gives it that very realistic look. You can adjust the properties of the stitch as well, um, the SBI, so you can really, again, kind of customize this to be exactly how you need it to be for production. And that's really the end goal here, is we're creating product that we can take directly into production, 3D, 2D, and production. Um, okay, so let's go back into my actual, I'm going to pull up this one that I haven't really um, altered, and I'll just go to the white. So the final parts, again, are those trims in those trim libraries, and then adding in your colorways, your print, your texture, all of those details that are going to give you that very realistic look. So here we have our colorways. We can simply click on these. You can see here I have an overlay that is simply an image file. If I want to bring in a texture, we do have a library of textures as well. So think of this as not the actual physical properties of the fabric that we're looking at for fit. This is the texture that's going on top. Um, more of the visual, I would say. So we have a full list here. Again, you can customize these. So if you have your own fabric, then you're not seeing one in here that really is kind of resonating the same. You can, you have a couple different options, but one of them that I really like is called the material converter. And this comes in with the software. A lot of people don't even know this is in their software. So just do a little search. It's a separate application. But this allows you, if I pull this up, you'll see I'm able to import a file. Okay, so any of these file types it will bring in. When it pulls it in, it's bringing in all of the maps as well. So if you work in like a U3MA file, for example, and you're creating those textures, it's gonna bring in all those maps, which allows you to then pull it into, um, say, Photoshop or Illustrator, recolor it, do whatever you need to it. But with those maps, it's much more realistic than just bringing in a flat image. So that is something that's embedded within your software. If you didn't know that was there, I highly suggest you use it for any of your custom textures. It's really helpful to get that final image. And then, of course, with any of these, let me just pull up one of my prints here. I'll pull up this um, Boho one. So this one, for example, I've just pulled in an image file. I am able to resize this. I'm able to add transparency, shininess. This is all about getting that final beautiful image. And then we can go into that photo reel mode. So the final stage is really kind of going into that photo reel, choosing your lighting source, and then the image output. I want to just let this switch over to the correct render type so we can look at the lighting. These are all presets. You have ability to bring in your own custom lighting sources as well. But if I choose, say, the top, you can see how different that is already. And then I can adjust the lighting in the going around the body. So once you are happy with this lighting, you do have some like ground, uh, we call it ground plane or ground reflection. If you want shadows and inner light to highlight any inside details, those kinds of things. But you can also output these images. So we have the single image, which you can do current view if you need to really zoom in and get a detailed shot for like a technical kind of close up, you can do that as well. Um, but you also have here the 360 degree and the animation starting from version 22. Okay, so you are able to animate 
directly out of here if you are using animated avatars. And those are also in the Oak Cloud in our portal. So if you are registered for that, um, you are able to download any of those animated ones or you can bring in your own. Okay, so we did increase the resolution. Another really nice feature, this can now go up to 8192. Very crisp, sharp image output, really nice. Some of the use cases of this, you know, people will use these in different ways, certainly for the technical portion, like I said, to get that sign off, to get the alignment. Also for mood boards. Okay, you can use this very quickly, create a mood board with any of these output images. People use these for websites, so that 360 degree image type that I showed you, you are able to pull all of those into a converter and use this um, to get this turntable effect. Okay, so you can very easily create these images for a website as well. And this is an example of the animation I wanted to show you. So we have one that's more for marketing, of course. This is going to be in the photorealistic mode. And again, you can choose your um, you know, avatar based on what type of animation you want, what type of avatar you want. But what's really exciting is we also have the tension maps displayed during the animation. Really important, again, when you are looking at fit, again, it's like if you have a fit model and you're asking them to move so you can watch how that fabric and how everything is moving on their body. Very similar, but here you're able to actually see those tension maps and see how it is stretching and pulling around the body in motion. So really important in fitting as well to do that. And then to kind of pull this all together, I just wanted to show you our O Cloud here and some things that we can do within the O Cloud. If you're not familiar, I've talked about it a couple times, but we do have here, you, this is just our demo folder, but you would have your own company folder where you are able to categorize all of your styles. It's a sh place to share. It's a place you can share with your vendors, you can share with your coworkers. Um, it's also a storage place. So let me just pull one up here and show you a little bit how I organize this. You can organize it however you want, but you'll see here I have my design inspiration folder. So that's everything I've gotten from my designer. I have all of my technical files in here. So here's my DXF. Here's my grade rule. Right? And then I have that style alignment board or my mood board set up in here as well. You can import any images simply by importing. So this can be a great place to store if you have a tech pack, you can do that. We do have a connection, by the way, um, recently to PLM systems, a couple. So if that's something important to you, you would go through this O Cloud to load it directly into your Centric as well. And I can show you that actually on here. You'll notice up here now on the top, you see that PLM. You can log in directly to your Centric from here and upload. It's going to capture all of that information for you. Okay, and then the other part of the OCloud is when I upload my files, I have a 3D. And this is a great place. You can see here, you can tag people, you can add comments. So that person that I tag is gonna get alerted right away that they have a new comment in here. So I can go in and I can say pin or I'm gonna draw a line here. I can say I want to raise the sleeve length and then I can simply tag the person that I want to address here and go from there. So I can make the comment, I can send it, and once I do that, they're gonna get an alert that they know they need to come in here and they need to adjust this. You have revisions up here, as many revisions as you need and description, it's gonna auto date it. Really great way to do a virtual digital fitting and capture your history capture your versions. I can click on version one, version two if I had, and it's going to pull up that exact one that I need, okay? So this is a area that is, again, not a lot of people I don't think know about this, but 
Oak Cloud is a really good place for you to be sharing your information internally, um, a great place to communicate with, say, vendors. You can, they can download their files directly from here, so they can come in here, right-click and download any of these files directly, the ones you give them permission to view, of course. Um, so this is a space also, I will say, that is being enhanced greatly in our roadmap and good things to come. I'm not gonna present any of that yet because it's a little bit further away than the other things I showed you, um, but some really nice features here that's gonna be much more interactive and help you. It's gonna pull in some construction details. Um, the tech pack will automatically upload into here. Um, the tech pack that we have will automatically upload and that's gonna encompass more information for you as well. So some really nice things coming. Okay, all right, and with that, thank you. I believe we're gonna have a little um, follow-up session here, a little happy hour. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Great, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all. Thanks to the FITM alumni who are here, the ASU FITM faculty, the FITM faculty, our industry friends and partners. We really appreciate your being here this evening. I thank you, Sabrina, who's been um, so generous with ASU, and it's been a good partnership. Thank you for that uh, terrific journey that we've had to our speakers tonight. Alex, uh, Verna, um, Roz, our two talented students, Gifty and Jessica. Thank you all for sharing your insights into this important segment of the industry. And I just wanted to add some food for thought. I have been managing um, educational partnerships for Optitex for about 15 years. The program I've seen built by Danita and Alex has been one of the best I've seen in any school, and I think we see the results with the students. We've used ASU students as interns, and for any company who's looking for those, I would endorse your students for your internship. So definitely talk to Danita, talk to Alex, get the information, get that ball rolling. And thank you for coming. And now it's happy hour. The, <laughs> the curtain's going to uh, open right now, and we have refreshments. Please stay, linger, and enjoy yourselves. Thank you.